Hey everyone, Yanjer here again. Finally, finally came in. D&D Essentials Kit. Great for new players. Some awesome additions for veteran players. Let's take a look. <laughs> find this earlier in the year at Target. It was all sold out. Every time I went in there, they looked at me like I was an idiot for asking for it. Eventually, I gave up. Just came in on Amazon. So let's do the unboxing. Ah, nice cover art, by the way. Yes, I did open it earlier because I sort of had to see what was in here. Dice. <clears throat> That's a nice... Standard set of this also looking dice. Uh, you got everything you need. I don't see anything missing. It does give you a bunch of D6s, which is cool because a ton of spells require them. The Adventure Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. So uh, this takes place in the Forgotten Realms, not too far from the Sword Coast. This. It's nice. It's a complete setting book. It gives you what you need to run the adventures. A little bit of overview. It's for levels 1 to 6, which is pretty cool. A lot of nice settings. Let's take a look at... Uh, Philan... Oh my god, I can never pronounce this place. Phandalin. Whew. Okay, so little map of the town. Um, you've got Butter Skull Ranch, which is for level three characters. Now it is nice that they sort of specify like, oh, when you get to this area, your character should be whatever level. That'll really help out a new DM. Uh, we've got pretty nice maps on a grid. Blah, blah, blah. Interiors. Upper level, the farmhouse, ground level, cellar. The only problems I have with this is who would name a ranch Butter Skull? Oh yeah, I just moved into the old Butter Skull Ranch place. Alright. Um, but at any rate, Circle of Thunder. We've got Falcon's Hunting Lodge. That's a pretty big hunting lodge. Uh, but very cool. So we got nice locations. We've got nice setups. If uh, you've got your own campaign, you've got a little bit of experience. Some of these settings are still pretty nice. You can easily, you know, take them out and use them for your own, uh, your own campaign. We've got the gold mine. What else we got here? Tower of Storms. A lot of very cool stuff, and then ah. then we have a little bestiary in the back. Uh, you got creatures and some characters of various levels. Um, they do have some character specifics. Um, dead. You got all your major things in here. Now the only thing. As we are, we go back to the beginning, character creation, which is coming up somewhere, I promise. Here we go. Uh, this is sort of a reduced options type of a campaign. So character options, race, we only have dwarf, elf, halfling, human. Classes, we have bard, cleric, fighter, rogue, wizard. And backgrounds, acolyte, criminal, entertainer, sage, and soldier. Yeah, that cuts out a lot of professions. It cuts out a lot of cool stuff. But I think, overall, this is pretty good for new players. You know, you've got the classic five professions. Uh, some flavor of fighter. You need a rogue to pick stuff. You've got your priestly guy and a wizard. Uh, the others would only 
well, I wouldn't say only, but they can be a little bit more confusing to someone who's never played. These have more uh, traditional stereotypes in video games and uh, different movies, anime and stuff. So just to get a feel for how to play, not too bad. Not too bad at all. So let's go back. We have a nice map of the Sword Coast. Uh, here we go. People love maps. It's hard to get a uh, view of everything in here. But Neverwinter, Neverwinter Woods. I guess we start down here. Found in the Ice Spire Peak. It's cool. The only thing I'm... I'm worried about is, are they going to want to go to Neverwinter? I don't remember seeing anything for Neverwinter in the book. Oh, that would be such a pain if you had to do that. But, uh, so that's the front. At the back, you have a more gigantic map of Fendolin, uh, which is pretty cool. I believe this is the same map from Elmop. Uh, the famous or infamous starting campaign for regular D&D, not the essentials. But it's pretty cool. And then they have one thing I really like. So this folds out into a card box. And we have different quest cards. So you can see the back is quest. And on the front, loggers can't. Mountain Toad quest. So it gives them, it gives your players a little overview. And then we go to items. Okay, so we have, like, for example, longbow plus one. The magic longbow is crafted by elves. You have a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. While wielding this longbow, you can use an action to learn which way is north. That's cool. Uh, we've got maces, battle axes, shield. Ooh, the famous boots of Ellen Kind. Your steps may no sound. So you have advantage on stealth checks. Uh, clockwork amulet. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Let's see. When you make an attack roll, wearing amulet, you can forego rolling the d20 to get a 10 on the die. Cloak of billowing, everyone's favorite. Use a bonus action to make it billow dramatically. Very cool. But these are cards. They actually, I don't know if you can see, it's perforated. So you can tear them out, give them to your players. Highly recommended. Uh, let me see. We got a bunch of magic items. What else do we have here? And then we have characters. So you have some nice character illustrations. I, I have to say, these are really great watercolor-esque characters and then this I think would really help out DMs when you're making characters you should make something like this Donabella fiasco Donabella is a young magic user who wears a paper mache unicorn mask because it makes her feel more magical use the spellcaster sidekick stat block in the rulebook to represent her personality I'd rather talk to books than most people ideal we all have a little magic in us the trick is finding it and bringing it forth. Bond. I want to join a prestigious wizard's academy one day. I just hope they accept unicorns. Flaw. I can't keep a secret to save my life. Or anyone else's. So here is uh, Donabella. So these are nice. Uh, as new DMs go on, if you have just these simple things, you don't necessarily need stats with them, but uh, we'll take a look in a minute. There are stat blocks that they have. This is a great one. These are the condition cards. Uh, grappled. A grappled creature's speed becomes zero, blah, blah, blah. So this is great because conditions can be very confusing. I gotta admit, uh, I often screw up grappled and restrained. Uh, even now. So having these cards to be able to give to new players is pretty darn nice.
And then we have uh, initiative cards. So where you end up in the initiative order, uh, I guess they're smaller scale battles, but um, it's very cool, very cool. Then we go on to the Essentials Kit rule book. All right, now this is nice. This is a stripped down version of the player's manual. Um, just covering the things that are in here. We won't go over it too much, but they sort of do it in a more simplistic way. The one thing I want to point out is Appendix A Sidekicks. So sidekicks are great for one person campaigns. So why do I really mention this? <clears throat> This is one of the best features of the Essentials Kit, is really the one-on-one -on -one campaigns. It's great when you're trying to get somebody new into the hobby. So for example, a girlfriend, I mean, come on guys, how many of our girlfriends or wives really want to play d d Most of them don't, but some of them might be up to it if it's just the two of you as opposed to a whole group where they don't know what's going on and people are acting silly and they don't want to get made fun of. Something like this could potentially get them into the hobby. Uh, I think it's good for kids as well. If you got kids, you could try a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so the they have three basic blocks. They have spellcasters, warriors, and expert. Uh, the Expert, we can see here, an agile and exceedingly helpful jack of all trades. So somewhere between a bard and a rogue, I guess. And then they have uh, leveling for sidekicks. Now this only goes to six level, but um, you know you could sort of extend this out on your own as things go. So one of the nice things. In addition to getting new people in, you're always going to have a situation where if you have a group, somebody's going to miss uh, some sessions at some time. Because I think now the majority of players are not young kids, like you'd see in Stranger Things, but now they're more adults. So adults have responsibilities, right? We can't always make everything. we got work, we got family, blah, blah, blah. This is a nice way that you can catch some people up especially if you sort of sideline their character from the main story. Uh, you can have sort of a side quest. Uh, this is also nice if you are doing some sort of a side quest specific thing, like for example, um, level three paladins, they should take their oath. You know, you could make people do different quests for different uh, class leveling features, you know, a, a barbarian who's going to go, uh, let's say, bear totem or something. Maybe he's got to go find a specific bear in a den. And so you could have a player play that and he can grab, you know, a spellcaster or something to sort of round it out. Next in the box, we have a very cheap DM screen. Uh, which actually isn't that bad. So there's the sort of inside. We have a nice longer picture on the outside. And if we can maybe get this going here, we can see the inside. You have the normal, um, the normal actions. Although I would say, you know, for someone who's played a little while who wants to be a DM. You probably want other things on a lot of them. You probably have a lot of the things memorized. Um, but hey, whatever. It's nice. The only thing is, it is slightly flimsy. So I can see this thing getting torn up. It's not nearly as nice as some of the other ones Wizard puts out that are thicker. But uh, this whole set, I don't remember. <laughs> I kind of forgot that it was 12 bucks or 20 bucks. But it's relatively cheap. And the last thing in here are, oh, not the glass, but uh, character sheets. So front and back, 
uh, great for making stuff. Um, you know, eventually people may want to graduate to D and D Beyond. D and D Beyond sort of clarifies certain things, makes it easier to calculate less math. Um, also, I have to say, every time I've made a character in there, especially with the different backgrounds, like I've always found more skills than I thought the player should get, or more languages. So. Even if I'm playing on paper, I'll always make the character in D&D Beyond just so that I can make sure I'm getting everything out of it that I should. And the last thing is, of course, an advertisement. Monster Manual Player's Handbook. Starter Set Essential Kit. I don't know what the difference between the Starter Set and the Essential Kit is, if we're being perfectly honest. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, hey, that's cool. 50% off on the player's handbook at D&D Beyond. That's not too bad. All right, so at any rate, Essentials Kit is great for someone who is new to the game, who wants to play. Uh, if you friends or family, it makes a great gift. The one-on-one -on -one play is quite good, even for more seasoned players who just want to add it to their campaign. So what do you think, guys? Uh, leave your comments below if you think this is a, a good gift for people, or should they just skip it and go right into the player's handbook? If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, we'll have more D&D content soon, and tell me what you think.